Non-IgE-mediated cow's milk allergy poses a significant diagnostic dilemma, both for the clinician but also for families. And that is because the symptoms are so non-specific and we do not have any good diagnostic tests for diagnosing non-IgE-mediated cow's milk allergy. At the central tenant of diagnosis, however, is elimination of the allergen and re-challenge with the allergen. And that is a really great way to understand whether a food allergen is causing the symptoms that we think that they are. So the best way to diagnose non-IgE mediated cow's milk allergy is to remove the cow's milk protein from the infant's diet, usually for approximately two weeks, and you should see a significant resolution of symptoms. We then recommend that the protein is then reintroduced into the diet for a short period of time and to watch for a re-elicitation of the symptoms. The major issue is that uh, so many of these families see such a dramatic improvement in their child's health and well-being, it can be quite difficult to convince them to re-challenge to that food. But sometimes just for one day is enough to let them know that really uh, we have scientific evidence then that their child has had a reaction to the cow's milk protein. So with non-IG mediated cow's milk allergy, of course you need to take a very thorough history because history is the most important way for us to work out which sort of syndromes that we're thinking about and what sort of symptoms might be related to cow's milk allergy. Undiagnosed cow's milk allergy can have a significant impact on the growth and well-being of the child and the family themselves. So often you hear of infants who are coming in who have not been sleeping well, have been significantly irritable, have had significant diarrhoea and vomiting and are failing to grow. Uh, not only that, but it can have impact on micronutrients with iron deficiency, anemia and other problems of malnutrition.